Meghan Markle delivered her first official speech of the royal tour in Fiji this morning with an emotion address on education where she spoke candidly about her own financial struggles as a young undergraduate at Northwestern University. The Duchess of Sussex used the speech to speak about the importance of access to education for all during her first official speech during the royal tour of Fiji, and only her second ever as a member of the royal family. Meghan spoke movingly of the feeling of pride and excitement that comes with attending university but revealed that she struggled with the cost of tuition as she addressed an audience at the University of the South Pacific today. The Duchess said it was through scholarships, financial aid programs and earnings from a job on campus she was able to afford to attend university. Without question, it was worth every effort, she added. After addressing the audience with a traditional greeting, she spoke of her pleasure to be on the island, before delivering the moving address on education. In her passionate speech she said, As a university graduate, I know the personal feeling of pride and excitement that comes with attending university, from the moment you receive the acceptance letter to exams you spend countless late nights studying for. I am also fully aware of the challenges of being able to afford this level of schooling for many people around the world, myself included. It was with scholarships, financial aid programs and earnings from a job on campus that went directly towards my tuition that I was able to attend university and without question, it was worth every effort. Everyone should be afforded the opportunity to receive the education that they want, but more importantly the education that they have the right to receive. And for women and girls in developing countries, this is vital. The Duchess of Sussex also announced two new grants for the Fiji National University and the University of the South Pacific. Meghan added, So I am very pleased to announce today that two new grants will be awarded to Fiji National University and the University of the South Pacific, allowing each of them to run workshops, which empower their female staff. This means that female faculty members are able to encourage others to follow in their footsteps and enter higher education and that more women become part of the decision-making process in academic institutions. Prince Harry also delivered a speech to students, during which he launched four new Queen Elizabeth scholarships. Before taking the stage, the royal duo enjoyed a colorful performance on climate change by singers and dancers at the university after being presented with traditional Fijian lays adorned with flowers. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are currently on their major 16-day trip to Oceania, the first one the royal duo has done together since they tied the knot last May. Even though Meghan has cut down her schedule due to her pregnancy, which was announced as she left for Australia last week, the former Suits actress will attend all her engagements in Fiji today. But before she addressed the students at the University of the South Pacific today, she was rushed out of a market where she was attending an official engagement, as large crowds sparked security fears. The royal couple visited at Cockatoo Island, where they watched the Jaguar Land Rover driving challenge with the Duke even snapping pictures on his phone. The official opening for the Games has been delayed by a huge tropical storm. Organizers took to Twitter to confirm that the tropical weather event arriving in Cindy would delay the opening of the Games, where Harry is due to make a speech. Both opted for a black shirt with the emblem of the Games, which is the event where the pair went public with their relationship last year. Pregnant Meghan threw on a chic white blazer and teamed it with black skinny jeans and tortoise shell sunglasses while Harry wore grey trousers and brown boots. The event is an international Paralympic-style sporting event for wounded, sick or injured members of the armed forces, as well as veterans. Prince Harry created the Games after being inspired by the U.S. Warrior Games, a similar sporting event for injured service personnel. When they arrived, Harry put an affectionate hand on his wife's lower back as they walked along the jetty to meet with the competitors and their support staff. They then watched the races get underway before awarding the drivers with their well-deserved medals. The royal couple also spent some time playing with remote-control cars with children who had traveled to the event from around the world with the athletes. Harry appeared to enjoy the toys as much as the kids as he was pictured laughing and even feigning annoyance as he gestured his arms in frustration. 
Earlier in the day, Harry and Meghan unveiled a Sydney War Memorial 84 years in the making at the Anzac Memorial. It commemorates the sacrifices of First World War soldiers from Australia and New Zealand was initially designed in the 1930s. But the Great Depression meant the vision of artist Bruce Dellett was shelved. It features a four-tier cascading waterfall on the Liverpool Street side of the monument. Harry wore the white tropical dress of his regiment the Blues and Royals, complete with medals and sword. Meghan was wearing a stunning black dress by New Zealand designer Emilia Wickstead and matching hat designed by Philip Tracy. They were met by Prime Minister Scott Morrison alongside Premier of New South Wales Gladys Berejiklian and David Elliott, the Minister for Veterans Affairs, on an overcast Sydney morning. There were also crowds along Liverpool Street, while other people, and a cardboard cutout of Harry and Meghan, watched on from balconies as the royals arrived. Twins Crystal and Sienna Dawson presented the royal couple with a medallion and a painting during their visit to the Anzac Memorial. The girls, aged nine, are from the Kumari Aboriginal dance troupe and both said they were nervous about meeting and performing for Harry and Meghan. Crystal, who did an Aboriginal art floral painting said, they said hi and nice to meet you. The medallion, presented by Sienna, said play the game the model of the Beverly Hills Public School which they attend. She said, I didn't want to dance at first, but then it was fun. Their mother, Connie, said, I think it was very overwhelming for them, as a parent. It was a very important ceremony and it's important that the next generation coming through should be part of it. The memorial was first opened in 1934 by Harry's great, great uncle and namesake, Prince Henry, Duke of Gloucester. The plaque unveiled by the Duke said, opened by the grandson of the Queen, the wording echoes the original which said opened by the son of the King and was designed to focus on the people lost, not the person who opened it. Retired General David Hurley, Governor of New South Wales told the 100,000 strong crowd, let silent contemplation be your offering. These words found at the entrance to the Hall of Silence evoke the sense of loss and grief that this memorial represents to the people of NSW. A choir sung I vow to thee my country Princess Diana's favorite hymn from her school days, which was sung both at her wedding in 1981 and her funeral in 1997. The Sussexes laid a wreath with a handwritten note which read, in grateful memory of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice and in recognition of the men and women for whom the scars of war endure. They then toured the Hall of Service containing 1,700 soil samples from each town, suburb and district in New South Wales listed as an address for First World War enlistees. The completion of the extension, which cost £22 million coincides with the 100th anniversary of the cessation of hostilities in the war. The couple had avoided any PDAs earlier this morning at the ceremony and were seemingly making up for it as they walked hand in hand around the event. Saturday marks the couple's fifth day of the royal tour and yesterday things reached new heights for Harry as he and three Invictus Games competitors climbed Sydney Harbour Bridge. The Duke swapped the New South Wales standard for the Invictus flag at the top of the landmark, which towers 440 feet, 134 metres, above the water. It took him 13 minutes to ascend the 464 steps to the top of the bridge along the east side, before crossing the central walkway to raise the flag which flapped in the breeze. Earlier on Friday, Harry and Meghan visited another Sydney landmark, Bondi Beach. There. The couple met representatives from One Wave to talk about their work on mental health and then visited MacArthur Girls High School to discuss social justice and youth empowerment. Prince Harry has spoken out for the first time since news broke of Meghan Markle's pregnancy. The Duke of Sussex thanked the Governor-General and Lady Cosgrove at Admiralty House for their hospitality at an afternoon reception before speaking about Meghan's pregnancy. Good day your excellency, ladies and gentlemen, he began. It is obviously great to be back in Australia and even more so because this is my wife's first visit here, so I'm very excited to show her this wonderful country of yours. Australia is of course home to some of the world's best sporting talent, but what you are about to see at these Invictus Games will, 
quite literally, astound you. During the speech, he spoke of his love for the country, and said he was thrilled he and Meghan got to share their pregnancy news while in Australia. He added, a demonstration of the power of the human spirit, the power of sport to change lives and the power of feeling part of all of this from the stands. There really is something for everyone. Thank you Your Excellency and Lady Cosgrove for giving us your magnificent home for the week. We are inviting all of our mates in Sydney. Finally, we are both absolutely delighted to be here. We are really impressed to see you serving beer and tea at an afternoon reception in true Aussie style. We couldn't think of a better place to announce the upcoming baby. Yesterday, Kensington Palace officially confirmed that the Duchess of Sussex was expecting. Their Royal Highnesses the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are very pleased to announce that the Duchess of Sussex is expecting a baby in the spring of 2019, they shared on Twitter. The news came after it was revealed that Meghan gave her first major sit-down interview since joining the royal family. Previously, New Idea learned that the palace was talking in riddles without stating the obvious before the royal tour to Australia and New Zealand before she was given the three-month all-clear. Wow.